Is the devil actually a Neanderthal? According to a local legend, the devil walked on a side of the volcano in Italy one day, and each of his steps is engraved in the rocks. The footprints were dubbed Devil's Trails by locals because only a supernatural being could walk such a perilous path, and because the footprints are found in volcanic rock, they have always been thought to be supernatural. The locals of the 19th century were correct about one thing, however, the footprints were not left by our species. Soon after it erupted 325,000 years ago, an active volcano was climbed by several curious and adventurous early Neanderthals. Three primitive humans who scrambled down the slopes of an Italian volcano left their footprints in volcanic ash. If the ages of the footprints are correct, they may be the earliest known footprints of our distant relatives. Indeed, strange footprints were discovered on the Roccamonfina volcano in central Italy several years ago. This discovery implies that Neanderthals passed through a volcanic slope shortly after its eruption. Volcanic eruptions can produce a dangerous flow of lava chunks, ash, and hot gas at speeds of up to 200 meters, 656 feet, per second, so this was a very dangerous excursion. Importantly, this happened during an interglacial period, so the climate was similar to today's, rather than the freezing ice age conditions commonly associated with Neanderthals. It was a long time ago, in fact, our own species probably did not even exist at the time. The hominins' exact identity is unknown, but they could have been early Neanderthals. The general shape of all the recorded footprints suggests that the trackmakers are related to fossils classified with the Soprano skull of Italy. The adult calvarium discovered near the village of Soprano in Italy, supported this theory, owing to its archaic morphology, possible relationship with older and Paleolithic assemblages from the same area. Incredibly, 500,000 years ago Homo erectus opened clamshells by drilling a hole through the shell with a shark's tooth, then the ancient humans engraved the clamshell with zigzag marks. Since we are on the subject of sharks, I want to thank Surfshark, for sponsoring this video and helping me to pay for a trip to explore some archaeological sites for a future video. Surfshark has provided a special offer for my viewers with 3 extra months for free, using my promo code when you buy a plan for 2 years. You can save money by using a VPN service to change your location to avoid price discrimination. Some the price of some products purchased online can vary depending on where you live. For example, the cost of airline tickets varies depending on where you are when you make the purchase, and the same rules apply when reserving a hotel room. With a VPN, your location appears to be the VPN server's location, which allows you to be anywhere in the world because you can select the server location you prefer. You can also use a VPN to download files in an encrypted fashion, to protect your sensitive information when traveling or using public Wi-Fi. In fact, one of the best options available right now is to buy a 24-month VPN plan with 3 free extra months from Surfshark, a fantastic deal. Just scan the QR code on the screen or click the link in the description and use my promo code to give it a shot. By the way, they have a 30-day money-back guarantee and with over 3,200 servers in over 100 countries, anywhere you go, you'll find a server that fits your needs. So stop living like a caveman and get a VPN today. In fact, multidisciplinary investigations have recently dated the Soprano site to the middle of the Middle Pleistocene, between 430,000 and 385,000 years ago. The peculiar morphology of the Soprano calvarium, on the other hand, has no equivalent in Europe or elsewhere, and its taxonomic status has been disputed thus far, with it being viewed as a late Homo erectus, a possible adult individual of Homo antecessor, or the holotype of a new species, named Homo sepronensis. Soprano could be a possible representative of a Neanderthal ancestor stock. A number of studies have also found phonetic links between the Soprano cranium and mid-Pleistocene fossils from Africa, including Carbway, and Europe, including Petrolona. At the same time, despite the diagnosis, this species could be the taxon of origin for the divergence of two distinct middle Pleistocene lineages, Neanderthals in Europe and Homo sapiens in Africa. As stated, the footprints were discovered on the Roccamonfina volcano in southern Italy, which has been dormant for the past 50,000 years. The footprints were left shortly after a pyroclastic flow from the Roccamonfina volcano, when the ground was soft and plastic enough for them to form, according to researchers. The volcano could have been a significant location for them. The space between the prints also suggests that the trackmakers did not run, but rather walked at a leisurely pace. 
This indicates that enough time had passed since the pyroclastic flow for the ground to cool sufficiently to walk on. The preserved footprints indicate that ancient humans went scrambling on the steep slopes of the active volcano, after a major eruption. Archaeologists found the footprints, preserved in volcanic ash from an eruption that occurred 385,000 to 325,000 years ago. At first, 56 footprints in three tracks were known. Later research discovered even more. They have discovered 14 more footprints, bringing the total to 81. The first 67 footprints discovered were all of people walking downhill, but some of the new ones are facing uphill. This indicates that the hominins walked up the volcano shortly after a violent eruption produced a pyroclastic flow, a lethal cloud of hot dust and gas. The footprints, according to the scientists, are fossilized in ash deposited by an eruption that has already been radiometrically dated as 385,000 to 325,000 years old. One person left a zigzag trail of 27 footprints, which likely aided in the descent of the steep slope. Another 19 print track has a gentle curve, but there are occasional palm prints where the walker placed a hand on the ground, most likely to avoid slipping. A straight line is formed by a third track of 10 evenly spaced prints. Remarkably, there are also two animal tracks, which could have been made by wolves. The human footprints are approximately 20 cm long and 10 cm wide. Using the average foot length to height ratio of 15%, this implies that the people who made the tracks were only about 135 cm tall, or 4 foot 5. The archaeologists conclude that the volcanic material was still soft and cool enough to allow for slow and regular walking by the hominids, likely not exceeding a temperature of 50 degrees Celsius, based on the observed step length and depth of the footprints. The trackways were left by a group walking down the mountain at a speed of 3 feet per second, which is considered a normal walking speed for someone who is not in a hurry. So, the visitors did not appear to be concerned about the still active volcano. One trackway is oriented in the opposite direction as the others, indicating that after the eruption the hominins went up the volcano and then returned. The discovery of rock artifacts nearby supports the theory that the site was visited repeatedly possibly to obtain volcanic rocks for new stone tools, possibly for working animal skins. In fact, the archaeologists also discovered two stone artifacts near the footprints. One is a sharp tool, and the other is a lump that has had sharp flakes chipped off of it. This suggests that the volcano may have been a source of stone for toolmaking. The Rocamonfina footprints are also notable because they were all created by adults. They must have been leaving the children at home and engaging in activities away from where they lived. There could be a variety of reasons for these hominins to visit the volcano. Volcanic eruptions create fertile soil, and wildlife often thrives near them, so that the mountains of fire do not always generate destruction. Nonetheless, the Neanderthals at the coastal site of Mossarini, Italy, collected volcanic pumice, a habit also demonstrated by a previous study, according to the researchers. The archaeologists explained that the rough textured volcanic rock was used to abrade animal skins. The pumice was most likely ejected by Campanian volcanoes erupting about 40 kilometers south of Mossarini. Pumice floats on seawater because it is full of air bubbles, and it must have washed up on the beach where Neanderthals collected it. The evidence, which included uphill tracks, a leisurely pace of walking, and the presence of stone tools, led researchers to believe that the well-studded site was more than just a transit area for ancient hominins. It appears that the side of the Rocamonfina volcano may have also served as a temporary home environment. There could also have been hot water from springs available for washing and bathing. However, until supporting evidence is discovered, such ideas are purely speculative. Furthermore, hominins and humans could have used seemingly non-utilitarian things for a variety of reasons, so the volcanic rocks could have had some sort of use in the form of a symbolic significance, that we could not hope to recognize hundreds of thousands of years later. Archaeologists believe prehistoric hominins sometimes collected stones for their aesthetic value. According to these findings, the hominin line developed behavioral complexities, such as collecting eye-catching, but useless, rocks and shells much earlier than previously thought. But who exactly left these tracks? Based on an assortment of shapes pressed awkwardly in time-worn volcanic sediment, it's impossible to say for sure. At least five different individuals appeared to be behind the marks. Further research could help narrow down ideas about the trekkers' sex, body mass and possibly even heights. 
given that our own Homo sapiens ancestors developed their distinctive characteristics only 300,000 years ago, we can be fairly certain they were not members of our own species. Yet, the size and shape of the prints match a hominin foot from the pit of bones in northern Spain, pointing to the identity of the trackmakers. One of the newly discovered prints at the site contains a surprising amount of information about a climber's right foot, the wide heel, the low arch, and the base of the big toe. Overall, it resembles the foot bones of 430,000-year-old fossils from Spain's Sima de los Husos cave. This is also consistent with a study that discovered the footprints short, wide shape matched the size of fossil feet from other parts of Europe. All of the new information helps us understand the presence of hominin populations in the Rocamonfina volcano area, during the Middle Pleistocene. As a side note, some have speculated that there was a link between the Campanian Ignimbrite eruption in southern Italy 40,000 years ago, and the extinction of Neanderthals in Europe. The eruption may have triggered a biocultural revolution, allowing modern humans to outcompete the Neanderthals, known by some as Homo sapiens neanderthalensis. However, this has been refuted by stratigraphic evidence, indicating that the cultural transition of the replacement of Neanderthals by modern humans began below the volcanic tephra. The most recent radiocarbon and argonargon dating results for the Campanian Ignimbrite eruption are 39,002, 120 to 39,705 calendar years ago. The timing of Neanderthal extinction in the region was also recalibrated to 40,000 years ago, predating the eruption. Just a reminder that one of the best options available right now is to buy a 24 month VPN plan with three free extra months from Surfshark. Just scan the QR code on the screen or click the link in the description and use my promo code to give it a shot.